Turning to the Korean Peninsula, where recent rhetoric from North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un is once again raising international concern. Kim last week declared his country is no longer interested in reintegrating with the South. He instead suggested the North should write its con rewrite its constitution and declare South Korea as its main enemy. The two nations have been formally at war for 70 years, but experts say Kim's statement marks a new downturn in relations between the North and the South. Kim Jong-un blamed recent drills between the U.S. and Seoul for the move. However, it may have more to do with the North's closer ties to two of its allies, Russia and China. The North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un is no stranger to fiery rhetoric. But experts say his statement to the North Korean parliament could change relations between the North and the South for years to come. We have our most hostile state, the Republic of Korea, in our nearest neighborhood. And the instability of the regional situation is soaring due to the US-led escalation of military tensions. Kim further instructed his government to enshrine the South as North Korea's chief enemy and disbanded the government offices responsible for exchange with the South. Pyongyang and Seoul have been in a de facto state of war since the end of fighting in the Korean conflict. However, both countries had officially pursued eventual reintegration despite their tense relations. Kim's announcement is set to change that. Tensions have been on the rise due in part to North Korea's nuclear weapons and rocket programs. And Kim has made an art of using facilities like these as part of his government's propaganda. The North claims it needs the technology for self-defense. But tests like these have long been a thorn in the side of the South and its international allies. Experts think Pyongyang has at least 30 nuclear warheads. The North's recent tests of new hypersonic missiles are also worrying Seoul. The military immediately detected the North Korean missile launch and shared the data with the U.S. and Japan. We condemn North Korea's missile launch as it is a provocation that seriously threatens peace and stability in the Korean Peninsula. The South has sought closer military ties with its chief supporter, the United States, including frequent joint military drills leading to a predictable tit-for-tat saber-rattling on both sides of Korea's demilitarized zone. The North is also strengthening its ties to both China and Russia, and their support may be emboldening its leadership. Russian defense officials recently helped Kim Jong-un mark the 70th anniversary of the end of fighting in the Korean War, and North Korea has emerged as an important supplier of fresh munitions for Moscow, bolstering Russia's faltering weapons industry after its invasion of Ukraine. Fears the conflict could escalate are spreading in the region. Japan recently held rocket evacuation drills in case the Cold War between the North and the South ever becomes hot. DW's Asia-Pacific bureau chief, Georg Matis, is in Seoul. He asks South Koreans about the new tensions and hopes for reintegrating North and South Korea. If you want to get a feel for the state of the frozen conflict between South and North Korea, now is probably a good time. South Korea is in the midst of a cold snap, with temperatures dropping to minus 20 degrees Celsius. And that very much reflects the chilly relationship between the North and the South. People here in the South were never really overly fond of the idea of reunification, because they fear the financial consequences. That is what especially young people here in Seoul tell me. Or people worry about it because they know about the anxiety of the world. So young people and old people think differently. We have very different cultures because we, we have divided for a little, like 50 years, I guess. So many young people will not be interested in unification. No. <laughs> but for the North, giving up on reunification is a big deal. Reunification with the South had always been a central part of the North's ideology since the state was founded. Does this mean that the North is actually preparing for war? Experts here disagree on this question. North Korea is due to reopen to foreign tourists next month and also has sold its own weapons to Russia for the war not a wise move when preparing for battle. 
the most likely scenario is that Kim Jong-un's behavior is aimed at strengthening his own regime. South Korea is more useful as an enemy with reports that people in the north lack food in this cold weather. A war, however, would be a massive gamble for the north, which has nothing to gain, people here tell me, and everything to lose. For more, we can talk to Jung Min Kim. She's lead uh, correspondent for NK News and joins us from Seoul. Jung Min, North Korea is adopting a more hostile posture towards the South, declaring Seoul to be its biggest enemy. What does that tell us about mm -hmm. Kim Jong Un's regime? Well, the intention of abandoning unification and calling South Korea a warring state now, not a compatriot anymore, I feel like that was a long time coming and it was a very old ideological line that was at odds with the militaristic policy line that Kim Jong-un was going for for the past few years, especially targeting South Korea. But for something like that to change, the grandpa era ident uh, ideology, they need a very big justification. And right now it looks like for Kim Jong-un it's a very good timing, it seems, uh, now that South Korea and U.S. nuclear deterrence has been increasing. You call this good timing. Uh, is this just more rhetoric from the North, or are you concerned that Kim, Kim Jong-un may actually be planning an attack? Well, I have seen this um, debate going on in D.C. and outside about whether or not we are close to an actual all-out war. I don't think so, but I also don't think that this is just rhetoric. Um, abandoning unification, it's not just a talk. It, now it's a set policy line that's delivered to uh, foreign ministry and other uh, elites in North Korea. And it's actually concerning for future generation. Um, and sub subjugating South Korean territory or preparing for subjugation that Kim Jong-un instructed. For now, sure, it's just the rhetoric, but it's also a very good, um, solid ideological justification that Kim Jong-un is using to build nukes that target one's compatriots. It's they're sort of getting rid of that ideological gap that they used to have. Hmm. And what about South Korea? How is South Korea responding to all of this? Hmm. Uh, it seems that the current plan is to just brush it off. Uh, we have seen South Korean leaders, the unification minister, defense minister, and the president using a lot of hostile languages, uh, aggressive languages in the past year. But it sounds like they are trying to make the Kim Jong-un's new policy and make it sound it's not new. And they're just continuing with the current deterrent strategy. But we are also looking at April election here. So stoking fear and showing strongman leadership, maybe it would work well with them. But how close we are to an actual war, I'm not sure uh, that would be the right way to describe it. Of course, this is all happening within a much broader context. Uh, how much are tensions between Seoul and Pyongyang a reflection of broader geopolitical tensions involving China and Russia and the U.S. and its allies? Mm. Uh, North Korea has been uh, um, trading very closely with Russia recently, and that may have been emboldened North Korea a little bit on knowing, uh, because they know that they have a very close friend now, not needing South Korea. Um, but the U.S. nuclear and conventional deterrence, I feel like it's too strong for North Korea to do a first strike, even with China and Russia's backing. Uh, but I do feel like there could be increased possibility of skirmishes and casualties at the border. It's totally possible, especially near the maritime border, which now North Korea says it's an illegal border. And it's likely that Russia and China will turn a blind eye, even if North Korea goes for an aggression near the border. Do Koreans still have any hope of the North and South reuniting again? I think a certain demographics in South Korea, especially uh, if you look at the polls, men in their 40s, they are more pro-unification. But um, I don't think the younger generations are interested that much in unification anymore. Um, and reconciliation, I think, at least for the time being, it's, it's, it looks unlikely looking at the Biden administration and UN administration's policy line. Um, even if a progressive wins here, it seems like it's very, it will be very difficult to move the minds of South Korean citizens as well. But if Trump comes back, uh, maybe it will open a few unexpected doors like we saw in 2018. But the problem there will be uh, North Korea trying to take South Korea out of the equation and the deals and the South Korean citizens would not be interested in something like that. Jung Min, thank you very much for talking with us. That was Jung Min Kim, NK News lead correspondent.